Hey guys, my name is Trevor, and this past weekend, Apple TV Plus' original series, Defending Jacob, finally came to a close, and that means we gotta dive into a full spoiler discussion, talking every little detail about the season, everything that went down into it, and how we feel about the ending, and I say we because I am joined today by one of my good buddies, Chris, over from Filmstock. How you doing, my friend? I'm doing great. I'm pumped to talk about this show. It's one of the best shows on TV right now, and I'm really pumped to go full dive into the show. Yeah, for sure. So uh, you caught on late. Obviously, you kind of started watching a couple weeks later. I've been watching since April each week, cliffhanger after cliffhanger. And that's kind of what was like the big bread and butter for me. Like each week, you're like, God dang, I want more. You want it more and more. But like each week, too, you, it gave you so many clues. And like us as viewers kind of had to put the puzzle pieces together. That's like, that's pretty much a big, big thing I really enjoyed about the show. Okay, describe it. How good it made you like feel you had something to watch again the next week. You know, it was it was it was crazy. It really was. Yeah, totally. Like you mentioned, I was on the fence about starting the show. And then uh, you really pushed me to start. I was like, yeah. should I? I don't know. And then I watched it about, I think it was like the second week after it came out. So there were already three episodes out. I watched those in like a day. And then yeah. I watched the, the fourth episode and I was hooked. Like you said, every episode, dude, it really does make you want to come back for more. And that's what that's what great TV does. And this show excels at that. Yeah, and obviously the acting, Chris Evans, Michelle Dockery, and J.J. Martell are all a real force, and as much as he is a dick, the character Neil is, I mean, it, that guy's far, uh, all the thing I know him from is Skyscraper with Dwayne Johnson a couple years back, and uh, other than that, the dude did good, he was an asshole and I didn't like him, you know, but if we're going to dive into that, do spoilers, you know, um, basically the whole time, I didn't want to believe Jacob did it, but I kind of believed he did do it, and that's kind of the frustrating part with how the show ends, which we'll get to in a little bit. But so how are you feeling like each episode? Like, like who do you think did it? Yeah, so that's a tough question because, like you said, it's kind of an ambiguous ending. So we really don't know who did it. We'll get really like into the details of that later. Yeah. But um, I was led on to believe that it was uh, Leonard Patz throughout yeah. most of the series, especially after the end of episode seven. But oh, it also sure. just felt like, you know, it might be Pat's, but it kind of felt like that was too easy. Like that was too predictable that it was going to be him. I thought there was going to be some major twist. So I'm kind of disappointed that um, they left that a little ambiguous, kind of wanted more of a clear answer. I believe it was the end of episode four, I want to say, where they revealed that J.K. Simmons plays Andy's dad. And that yeah. was like... I was like, I had no idea he was in the show. I didn't even watch the full trailer. I know he's like in the end of the first trailer, but when he showed up, I was like, damn, they're going for it. And like, you bring in a big gun, one of my favorite actors who plays Fletcher in Whiplash and J. Jonah Jameson, of course. You bring him in, I'm like, I'm on board. They're really, they're really going for it. And then at the o opening of episode five, you get that awesome scene. It's like five, 10 minutes long yeah. where Andy is like finally talking to his dad for the first time in like 30 years or something crazy like that. And yeah. uh, it really sets the stage. You know that J.K. Simmons is going to have a role. They're not going to bring him in for nothing. And you know there's going to be an epic final like confrontation at the end. And that did happen. I liked that final confrontation they had. I think that was some of the for best sure. acting in the show. Oh, for sure. Like, and so when that happened too, I was like, he has to have a big point. He's got to have a huge thing to do with it. And quite frankly, he had the biggest role in the whole show without having a big role in the show. Like his, what he did, and um, like how he hired the Blue Lincoln guy, who we'll get to in a second. He hired him or had his uh, help him out. And yeah. Threatened Pat. I didn't see that coming. I didn't see a lot of shit in the show coming. But when I saw that happen, I said, "Whoa, that is a way different turn of events than I thought was going to happen." I know it's kind of fast forwarding jumping ahead a little bit so we'll retract here but when uh chris evans and fletcher are talking that's where i kind of felt like uh when i thought about it more especially after elliot from movie files really kind of put us in my head we really are basically Lori because Lori gets like the crap out of the stick the whole time she finds out everything late as we're finding out basically she's finding out too and that's why i was like man we really are the parents because the whole time my girlfriend thought jacob did it i was yeah, I got andy and I thought he didn't do it, you know. So the whole time the show's had a torn. Me and my girlfriend arguing after. I'm like, no, he didn't do it. There's no way, you know. So it, it really, that's how good of a show it was. It really got me talking and just loving every episode, you know. But uh, yeah, I mean, I love the way that the the show opens. I mean, first of all, we can talk about the intro music. It's just it's chilling, very subtle. The yeah. little like the it's like a you can't really hear it. It's like dun 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 dun. Really uh, plays into that mystery vibe that the show provides. Um, but what I really love was that first episode. You get 
you know, it's it shows their status quo, their everyday life, and mm-hmm. they're a happy family. But, you know, something just seems off about Jacob from the get-go, in my opinion. And that's yeah. really due to Jade, Jade Martell's performance. But then when you get, like, this lockdown happens out of nowhere, and then you find out there's a dead body, and you see that uh, Chris Evans' character, and he's assigned to the case. He's the district attorney. And it just starts, you know, the, the wheels are in motion. And then yeah. you see that he's a student and then you find out that this is going to be there's going to be a conflict chris evans is going to have to get pulled from the case and that really is like what sparked this whole series the drama in my opinion yeah and um something that i thought about a lot is when the school went on lockdown it was an early episode or episode one or two i don't know if you remember yeah but uh jacob calls andy he's like hey like kind of freaking out and he was about to tell him something and that, that sat with me a long time and he's like and dad but yeah nothing never mind like love you yeah. bye you know and like he was gonna say something and i was like okay we're gonna figure that out that's gonna come up in definitely in a later episode and quite frankly it never did and that was mm-hmm. kind of a bummer for me but so i guess like big highlights because it's hard to talk about this whole show it's so good yeah the big highlights for me is when andy straight up asked jacob did he do it that hit me so hard like, i got chills and i was like i felt like i wanted to cry i was like i felt like i was jacob my dad was like asked me this yeah. appalled crazy thing he straight up like did you do it like did you kill him i was like holy god like it's such good acting and like that, that court scene episode seven you know like in mm. the, the oh, it was episode seven right the trial yeah i mean it's just crazy like all these different characters that kind of get brought up you know from uh, duffy who was a detective who's a very likable character really trying to help out to joanna being the best lawyer you can ask for i mean she was on fire neil being kind of a shit lawyer i don't care man he wasn't this wasn't that good but to also Derek and his story that was like that was big that wasn't just big that was like oh god that like jacob did it and i i right now how the show end i i believe he did it and after that hearing that story i was like man how, how can you write that and not do it you know that's where i was like oh boy so, yeah no totally i see that and like before I like get into who I think did it in the very end, uh, you mentioned Derek, and that brings up the points of other supporting characters who I don't believe or feel got the proper send off. And what I mean by that is we don't see the finality of like their arcs with Jacob. Sarah, like we mentioned, another great character in the show, pivotal role, and there's like no final scene between her and Jacob. I would have liked to see more of that. I would have liked to see a final scene with Derek. I would have liked to see like a final scene between Andy and the detective that was helping her. Um, I forget her name, but that detective, I would have loved to see them Duffy. have a final scene. Yeah, Duffy. Yeah. And then like you uh. even said, Neil, I would have liked to see one last confrontation. You get like a look between the two of them, uh, between Andy and Neil, but there's like there's no like final scene. And I really I really feel like in that last episode, there were some missed opportunities for character arcs. And, and for sure. And I, I, will, I want to touch on the last episode pretty much mm-hmm. a lot, you know, but um there was this constant feud between neil and andy that i never understood why and I, I said you know what they're gonna show us they're gonna show us they're gonna show us and the only thing we got and the only thing i could think about is that andy was giving neil pointers in that bar that was it maybe neil had resentment resentment for him for that um for the longest time i thought neil and Lori were having an affair i was like something will happen like that something crazy that andy just hated his guts and it didn't really explain that. And it didn't explain everything, and I don't think it needed to, but the whole, like you said, the proper send off for these characters, I mean, Derek, why didn't Jacob confront Derek? Why didn't it uh, have uh, uh, Sarah and Jacob? You know, Sarah was in mm-hmm. many episodes, gave him little information, and they're like, yep, bon voyage, you know? <laughs> Here's 20 bucks, thanks for your yeah. time. Um, and also, Neil, why didn't him and Andy kind of have a confrontation? And obviously, the last episode, the whole time uh, we were talking about like how Neil and Andy are trying to figure out why he's going on trial. And right. that reason we found out for why he's going on trial, I never thought about that in a million years. I, I never did. I thought maybe Andy killed Jacob. Or uh, killed Jacob. I thought Andy maybe killed yeah, Jacob. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, whoa, like how, how much of an ass can you be to blame it on your son, you know? So like this whole time, it gets kept you guessing, as I said, which was my favorite part of the whole show. But like, like episode eight, the pivotal episode to really just, D- get grasp it all doesn't feel like a full missed opportunity but feels like kind of a missed landing in a way you know mm-hmm. and and i think that that goes to show that they kind of rushed it here i think that like we mentioned earlier there could have been 10 episodes we've talked about this before but i think there yeah. should have been 10 and you made one of the best points i've heard on this episode is uh there's a scene where Lori is like 
really just ha- she's reached her breaking point. She's driving mm-hmm. with Jacob in the car. They're going to a doctor's. They're going somewhere, maybe shopping. The doctor's clothing. The haircut. I forget. Haircut. That's what it is. And it's raining. Yeah. And she starts speeding. She starts asking him questions. Did you do it? Did you do it? And she spins and hits like the outside of the tunnel, the wall. Airbags go off blood. You said if it went off there, that would be amazing. And then they could have two more episodes. I completely mm-hmm. agree. That, that was like a point I was about to touch on. Yeah. That would have been the craziest ending to episode uh, eight, right? Yeah. And like Andy getting a phone call. Or like or maybe just running into the brick wall and a blackout. And like directed by the credits roll. Yeah. That would have been like. Silence oh too. That would have been awesome. Oh my God. Yeah. Like just straight up, like basically a long outward view of like just a car on like smoking and just, uh, uh, I can't believe Lori did that. And when, after they had like 15, 20 more minutes of that, I said, oh man, like it wasn't too much time left when that happened. I said, this isn't going to be a full resolution, but Andy really stuck to his guns. He answered mm-hmm. every question and they really made it about the trial. And I'm guessing that's a show that Lori had reached her breaking point. But never once hinted it was about Lori. It was always about Jacob and Andy, and that's maybe misleading as a viewer. But maybe that's kind of good. But you know, you know what I'm saying. Like it mm-hmm. never was. Never we never knew what it was about. But it never even hinted that it was about Lori. I guess he asked questions about Lori, and you could see that Andy was kind of offended by that. And I guess if you can pick that up, I always thought Andy and Lori broke up or Lori left or you know you got divorced. That's what the big thing for me. Never saw that coming. So. Uh, that, that was another thing that just like, wow, blew my mind, you know? Yeah, I think the major hint, look, thinking back on it now, is like every episode, there was like one or two moments where it would show the current day where Neil is with um, Andy, and he would be like, was there ever a moment where you felt Lori could have thought that Jacob did it? Like, that was a common recurrence throughout the show. Yeah. And I think that was like the hint that, you know, this is about Lori in the end. Yeah, and I missed that hint. I really did. And I, I always wonder, I said, I said it in every review leading up to this. I said, Andy gets so defensive and looks distraught when Lori's mentioned. That's why I thought, maybe Lori hangs herself. Maybe Jacob hangs herself because he seems so upset. And you really find out why. It, it, it's really crazy. But another thing to touch on episode eight is how we got all of our characters that were in the show. Didn't get power send off. They didn't even mention Joanna, really, after the blue Yeah. Joanna's like, call you later, dog. Peace out. You know? yep, like, peace oh. out. And she's gone. Um, Another one would be, like, Ben's parents, who, like... That was my next point. Yeah, like, <laughs> the, it shows him running, and then you see the guy from the balloon can, Father something was his nickname. Oh, and, really, like, yeah. he stops him. He's like, I'm here to protect you uh, if you need me or whatever. And then we don't see the dad again. We see the mom later in that episode when Lori goes outside. She, she like, she's drinking wine, you know. She's coping with this kind of becoming an alcoholic yeah. because of it. She drops the glass and cuts herself, and then Lori runs away, and that's what we get from that. So yeah. I don't know what the show was trying to say about the Ben murder. Maybe they were just that was used to show the destruction of the Barber family. I don't know. And that's what maybe I try about uh, try to think about too, because mm-hmm. obviously Ben's parents will never be the same, never be happy again. Never. There was an unthinkable thing happened, but also neither will the Barber family. And like when they went to Mexico and tried to trade it up, I felt it was um, so rushed. How much stuff happened, and then we, I think we talked about this a little bit before. Like mm-hmm. it's like on the last 15, 20 minutes, you know, or thirty minutes. Oh, we're in Mexico. They add a new character, Hope. It's like I don't care about this character. What happened to Sarah? What happened to all these other characters yeah. that I keep mentioning? But Hope gets brought up. Like oh, then a whole thing gets brought up that maybe Jacob did it again. And, and I thought it was kind of wasted, but I thought about it this afternoon. Maybe that's what led Andy to get drunk to tell Lori. You know, that maybe like oh my God, Jacob might have done this. Like maybe unthinkable thing, and he told Lori that his father sent Father Leary to tell Pat to kill himself, which I didn't see coming. I thought that was crazy. I thought Pat was too easy of an answer, but Father Leary threatening him, I was like, that's, that's, that's a little out there. That's a little like, whoa, I didn't think about that. But the whole Mexico situation, Jacob might have done it, and then all of a sudden he didn't do it. Hope and her family, gone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just gone we don't even see another scene between hope and the barber family or even hope she's just she goes back to her family and they're gone and then uh the barbers just leave and they leave right after that and then very soon after it really shows like Lori how she's had such a hard time the whole time mm-hmm. she really have a hard time and then eventually breaking point crash to the car and i i don't know how if i agree with andy really like sticking with her i i don't know if i i, I was in the situation i don't know if i could do she tried to kill herself and my kid it, quite frankly, I think they both would have been dead, going 90 miles per hour into a straight brick wall. Mm-hmm. I thought they were dead. And I, I think honestly the did. Sh- I think the show would have been a little better off that if they had died in the episode. 
I think that would have been kind of like, and Andy's just by himself. And then Meredith on trial for freaking who knows what, whatever. You no, know, yeah, but. I think that would have been a powerful ending because the message they really sent home with that final shot of like Andy in uh, Jacob's room, kind of distraught with everything that's gone on and having to live with this defending his wife, uh, basically withholding evidence in both cases because he got rid of the knife in Jacob's case. Everyone yeah. forgets about that, so that's a key point. And then key he point. he he definitely knows that Lori it wasn't an accident because he sees the baby book in the trash and he's like, what the hell's going on? He's spamming yeah. her phone. He definitely feels like something sketchy. So I think that had they died, then the guilt that he would have felt from withholding evidence for both it would have been like really relevant to his life because it, it could have been like a message. You know, that final shot could have had more meaning because he act, his family's gone. So him withholding the truth does nothing but cause more guilt for him for the rest of his life. Yeah. And I felt that would have been a little bit more powerful. And we've been talking the whole time. I've been saying that it's episode eight, six landing. You are my favorite shows of all time. And it, it, I don't think it's six landing fully just because the number one question we wanted the entire time to be answered. Mm-hmm. Who the F killed Ben? Is it Jacob? Is it Leonard Pat? Is it Father Larry? Is it Andy? Who the hell is it? Was it Derek? Was it was it Sarah? And we didn't get an answer. And some people were maybe thinking like, oh, a new season? It's a limited series. Shit's done. It's over. Wrap it up. It's over. Bye bye, Defending Jacob. And I just I exactly wiped the hands of it. I I can't believe we didn't get an answer. If we got an answer, it would have been a perfect show. If Jacob woke up from the coma, and maybe thought like woke up and said something, like Dad, I killed Ben. Something crazy. Yeah, I would have lost, lost my mind. Lost it. We didn't. My perfect ending would be um, the car crash kills them, and then you find out. But you also found out like who did it. So like I don't know if that makes sense. I would have just I would have really loved to see a definitive answer. I would have felt yeah. like the eight episode investment would have paid off more. Um, and the one crazy thing I truly feel remember that one kid that was touched by Leonard Pat. Yeah, disappeared. Gone. What if he came up and he did it? What if they gave us something like that? And mm-hmm. he's like, hey, man, I just wanted to tell you. He didn't show up to court. Could have been. Hey, man, he yeah. could have known something for real. He didn't even show up. They said, all right, I made mean, the budget issues. I don't know why they had so many characters that just skipped out after. Like, that's, that's a waste of a character to have. No clue. Yeah, I sound like we're kind of hating on the show. Like, I love the show. I thought it was really well made. But it's just this episode eight had so many questions. And the main one, the main one I wanted to be answered mm-hmm. wasn't. So, yeah. I don't know. Overall, I love the show. I love talking about it each week. And for the thoughts, man, we had to get them out there. <laughs> no, yeah, I, I really did enjoy the show. I'm glad I watched it. Each each episode, like we've said, it built, it built, it built. And then did it stick the landing? No, I don't think it did. But that doesn't make it a bad show by any means. A lot of shows don't stick the landing. And I might rewatch Defending Jacob again one day. You know, maybe a year from now, I'll get the urge yeah. to watch it. But uh, mainly, I just love seeing Chris Evans. He did a great job here, and the writing Fantastic. was stellar. Oh, yeah. Um, as I said, Emmy season, I think the show should win quite a bit. From yeah. acting to production to everything. I think it's really, really well done. So, defending Jacob, there you have it.